One, two, three. One, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one. Okay. Two, 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 one, two. Testing, one, two, 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 two. Only thing is the piano. All right, huh? Are you good with the piano?
one, two. Audio check, testing, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Audio check, testing, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Check one, two, wireless mic, check one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. This is an audio check, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one.
Testing, testing.
good afternoon. Let us pause for a moment to silence all cellular devices. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to commence the investiture ceremony for Coppin State University's seventh president. The distinguished delegates. President J. Herman, the University of Baltimore, University of Maryland, Baltimore. President Wallace Lowe, the University of Maryland, College Park. President Mickey Burnham, Bowie State University. President Kim Schetzel, Towson University. President David Wilson, Morgan State University. Dr. Nathaniel Knox, Benedict College. Ms. Diane Drake, Kentucky State University. President Juliet Bell, the University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Interim President Thomas Bowling, Frostburg University. President Nancy Kanuski, the State University of New York, Onionata. Dr. Michael Freeman, Tennessee State University. Dr. Jerome Wilson, Dillard University. Dr. Charles Young, Savannah State University. President Kurt Schmoke, the University of Baltimore. President Donald Bosch, the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science. Dr. Denise Simmons Graves, Montgomery College. Dr. Lester Burney, the Community College of Baltimore County. Mr. Anwar Hassan, the Maryland Higher Education Commission. President Freeman Rabowski, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Members of Coppin State University's outstanding faculty representing four colleges, the College of Arts and Sciences and Education, the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences, the College of Business, and the College of Health Professions. Our platform guests. Dr. Robert L. Corrette, Chancellor, the University System of Maryland. Dr. Beverly Downing, Interim Provost, Coppin State University. guests, Dr. Robert L. Corrett, Chancellor of the University System of Maryland, Dr. Beverly Downing, Interim Provost, Coppin State University, the Honorable 
Van Carden, U.S. Senator, State of Maryland. Dr. Deborah L. Thompson, Professor, the College of New Jersey. Dr. James Fielder, Jr., Secretary, Maryland Higher Education Commission. The Reverend Dr. Harold A. Carter, Jr., Pastor, New Shiloh Baptist Church. Regent Barry Gossett, Vice Chairman, Board of Regents, the University System of Maryland. Dr. Sanithia Green, President, the Coppin State Meet and Confer Association. The Honorable Catherine Pugh, Maryland State Senate District 40. Mr. Shaquille Carbon, President, Student Coppin State Student Government Association. Ms. Alicia Ritchie, Chairperson, the Coppin State Development Foundation. Mrs. Elise Collier, President, Coppin State University National Alumni Association. Ms. Sherry Larkins, President, Coppin State Staff Senate. Dr. Reginald Avery, President, Coppin State University from 2008 to 2013. Dr. Christopher Hicks, Joanne Christopher Hicks, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs and Chief of Staff for President Thompson. Dr. Mortimer Newville, President, Coppin State University from 2013 to 2015. Dr. Ahmed Elegan, Chief Information Officer and Vice President for Information Technology, Coppin State. Dr. James Tacona, Dean College of Arts and Sciences and Education. Mr. Stephen Danick, Vice President for Administration and Finance. Dr. Beverly O'Brien, Dean College of Behavioral and Social Sciences. Mr. Douglas Delzell, Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Dr. Ronald Williams, Interim Dean, College of Business. Dr. Tracy Murray, Dean, College of Health Professions. I introduce to you now Dr. Claudia Nelson, the Grand Marshal and Coppin State Faculty Senate President.
may be seated. I introduce to you now Dr. Claudia Nelson, the Grand Marshal and Coppin State Faculty Senate President. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the seventh president of Coppin State University, Dr. Maria Thompson. Please remain standing through the presentation of colors by, the, by Coppin's Army Senior ROT, the singing of both the Star Spangled Banner and Lift Every Voice and Sing, and uh, the presentations of colors and invocation by the Reverend Dr. Harold E. Carter, Jr. The presentation of colors. Steve. 
feel free to please sing along. gracious God, our creator, sustainer, redeemer, we stand humbly in your glorious presence with thanksgiving for this day. We're here according to divine providence, for indeed your will is yet at work. Thank you for arranging these moments that are so precious when we can bow our head and recognize where our blessings come from. And with all of the skills and talents that have assembled here in this room, we still must acknowledge you as our God. You blessed us with so much talent. You have raised up one amongst us, Dr. Thompson, and here we are rejoicing because with all that you bless us with, we still cannot make a day. Psalmist reminds us that this is the day that you have made, and we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. We invoke now your spirit upon this experience of celebration and thanksgiving. We thank you for Coppin, and we thank you for this community. And we ask now your further favor and blessings to be upon our endeavors. We rejoice in you, the God of our salvation, because you do all things well. Bless our time of sharing now as we give your name the glory and the praise, thanking you for a mind, thanking you for education thanking you for again this experience we give it to you not only this day but in days to come grow this work this institution that the city of Baltimore and surrounding areas will continue to be blessed for your glory and for your praise we pray and now we say together amen Please be seated. I wish to welcome to the podium Coppin State University's 
interim provost and vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Beverly Downing. Thank you, Dean Collins. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, I should say. Hey. It's a new day. <clears throat> On behalf of the Coppin family, I welcome you to the investiture ceremony for Dr. Maria Thompson, our seventh president of Coppin State University. We are honored to have delegates assembled here today from other universities and colleges and to share this occasion with us. Thank you. And we greet the members of the Coppin State University faculty. We are so honored to have a distinguished platform party with us who have come to be with us today and to bring greetings from the groups that they represent. We will now have greetings from Senator Ben Cardin, Dr. James D. Felder, Jr., uh, Senator Catherine Pugh, Regent Barry Gossick, and Miss Alicia N. Ritchie, respectively. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here and to join you in celebrating the investiture of Coppin State University's president, Dr. Maria Thompson. I bring your greetings on behalf of your federal partners, my colleague in the Senate, Barbara Mikulski, and Congressman Cummings, Ruppersberger, and Sarbanes. Dr. Thompson, since the university is named for the trailblazer and outspoken higher education advocate, Fannie Jackson Coppin, your appointment is especially fitting. <laughs> Coppin State University was founded more than a century ago to provide training for African American elementary school teachers in Baltimore City. Its founders knew that education is the great equalizer in our society. I'm a proud graduate of the Baltimore City Public Schools. And Coppin State University's leaders knew back then, just as they know today, the critical role higher education institutions play in educating students and enriching our communities. I'm proud of Coppin State's rich history and dedication to the West Baltimore community, including efforts to improve the quality of education at Rosemont Elementary School, just a few blocks away from this building, and the dedication of your nursing students who care for the neighbors of Coppin State. And Dr. Thompson, Coppin State is incredibly fortunate to have someone who understands the current needs and demands in higher education. You not only bring to Coppin an ex extensive background in administration, you've also established a solid track record of innovation and creativity through your time in higher education. I would point, for instance, for your institutional role in creating Tennessee State University's Tiger Institute, a cutting-edge graduate research institute that connects underrepresented students to the science, technology, engineering, and maths, so-called STEM fields. There's no question that STEM career represent the future and that minorities and women are missing from these fields far too often. In today's diverse economy, it will be more important than ever to connect students and these career opportunities. Dr. Thompson, you have notable experience in this regard. Your visionary leadership will be critical asset to Coppin as the university and the larger community face a number of real challenges. Our city is recovering from last year's unrest, which took a serious toll on the community of West Baltimore. We need the strong established partnership of Coppin State University and its students to help us continue to heal and address the issues that have disenfranchised members of our community. Dr. Thompson, I look forward to working with you to find ways in which we can make the city's university system and its community 
even stronger. On behalf of the nearly 4,000 Cobham State University students and the West Baltimore community that has relied on the steady presence of Coppin State University for more than 100 years, I'd like to commend you on your vesture. Congratulations. Thank you. We are very pleased that you took time out of your very busy schedules to be with us today. And uh, we will now have a musical selection from Jalen Crawford. Jalen is a graduate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrapping it up. Well. <laughs> Uh, first, let me take a moment to say thank you all, but let me acknowledge some elected officials who are in the audience with us, at least the ones that I see. And if I don't call your name, it's the mistake of the mind and not of the heart. Uh, let me acknowledge first the president of the city council, Bernard Jack Young. Let me also acknowledge Delegate Nathaniel Oakes. And allow me to acknowledge Delegate Antonio Hayes and former delegate Patrick Hogan. And having said that, Dr. Maria Thompson, on behalf of all of the legislators in the state of Maryland, let me say congratulations. We are so pleased that you are part of our community. We understand the significance and the importance of Coppin State University. This is the anchor of this community. And while it is an anchor of this community, it is also a place where young and old people come, older people come, to get an education. And while we may not often finish in the four-year period that is required for many of those who come to many institutions in this state, let me tell you that the education that you provide for the people who come to Coppin State University is second to none. We are so proud of this institution. And every time I think of Micah and Coppin and Morgan and University of Baltimore and these institutions that mean so much to so many, I cannot be more pr proud. I just want you to know, Dr. Thompson, that we stand ready, willing, and able to support this institution as it grows and links to the other universities in this city. And I'm seeing my great friend, my president, Dr. Yo, right here from uh, Micah. Thank you for being among us, but more importantly, let us all give her a round of applause and commit, commit to being productive members of your community, our community, Coppin State University. Thank you all. Somebody told me that the speaker pro Tim is here. Where is she? Can you please stand up? Now, let me just tell you, and I have to take a pause here because Speaker Pro Tem is, she is, first of all, this is one of the highest ranking uh, women in the nation and has, you know, stood so steadfast and strong for education in this nation. And I, you all know her here in Maryland. We know her in the nation. So thank you for being here as well. Good afternoon. It, it's what a wonderful, beautiful day and, and great celebration. I'm pleased to be here and honored, and it's quite a pleasure for, to me to represent Governor Hogan as Secretary of Higher Education. And as the Reverend started out and said, we've got to celebrate these special, precious moments. They go by awfully quickly. And I think about just where we were a year ago in, in Baltimore with the tension and negativity and look one year later, just one year later, look at our surrounding, look at this university and the positive atmosphere that it brings. This is what we have to celebrate. <laughs> Governor Hogan and the Com Higher Education Commission understand very fully that higher education is a transformational engine for individuals. And today we're here to celebrate dreams and hopes and achievements. Um, you wouldn't know this, but during the session in the middle of the budget, 
there's always a push to where you can cut. And higher education was being protected very strongly by Speaker Pro Tem, who actually asked to meet separately with me and, and asked the very good question, what else can we do to help? And that's a rare thing in politics these days. And I can just tell you, that's what we're here today to say to Dr. Thompson. We're so pleased that she's here. We're excited about the future and look forward to working with her. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> I'm uh, bringing greetings on behalf of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. And uh, <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to spend some time at Coppin and, and know what a great place this is. I also know that uh, being on the search committee that brought Dr. Thompson here was quite a pleasure and quite an honor. And we are very pleased on behalf of the Regents to offer our support to Dr. Thompson as she really makes this a best, better place. It's a great place now, but I think she's really gonna take it to new heights so that eagles really can soar. And I think she will really be the one that does that. So Dr. Thompson, we offer our sincere thanks for your acceptance of the job and for our support going forward. Good afternoon and greetings to all. On behalf of the Coppin State University Development Foundation Board, I am honored to officially welcome you, Dr. Thompson, to our Coppin family and to offer you congratulations on your inauguration as Coppin's seventh and first female president. I and the foundation board enthusiastically join in the sentiments of all the speakers this afternoon and join with the entire Coppin community to express its love for Coppin and its shared aspirations for Coppin's future. You are a big part of that future, to which we look boldly with great expectations and unrelenting hope. This inauguration day marks the beginning of a new chapter in Coppin's history and provides the entire Coppin community with a unique opportunity to renew and rededicate ourselves to our common purpose and Coppin's core mission to empower students, promote community revitalization, and strengthen relationships with local, national, and global partners. It is also an occasion for all of us to reflect on the deep heritage here at Coppin and its culturally rich history as an institution that provides quality education programs and community outreach services, and to reflect on the profound contribution Coppin has made to our lives and to the community as a whole not only here in West Baltimore, but in the state of Maryland and across the nation. More personally, I could not be any prouder today as a former student, staff member, and faculty member, and as an alumna and board member. I have had the opportunity over the past two decades to interact with four of the previous six Coppin presidents. And I can say without a doubt that Dr. Thompson is the right person at the right time and the ideal leader to shape our campus culture in the 21st century. I was fortunate to have been a member of the search committee that selected Dr. Thompson for this position, so admittedly, I'm a little biased. But the truth is, my fellow search committee members, including my friend Barry Gossett, Gossett, who you just heard from, and the Board of Regents all agreed. In our view, there was no better person to lead this institution forward at this moment in its history, and we are thankful that Dr. Thompson accepted our offer of this presidency with such fervor. I've also had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Thompson on a number of occasions and I'm always impressed with her keen intellect, her commitment to excellence, her decisiveness with firmness and her sense of fairness. I'm always even more impressed, however, with her ability to motivate and energize others and bring them together in a common enterprise with such human warmth. She possesses the vision and energy to lead us forward and is ideally suited to not only meet but overcome the many challenges Coppin will assuredly face in the coming years. Dr. Thompson, the foundation wishes you health, happiness, and success in your new post as president of Coppin State University. You can count on our expertise and support to make your vision for Coppin a reality. We look forward to working with you and thriving together as you lead Coppin to new heights of excellence and to meeting and overcoming any challenges with you as our colleague. Again, welcome and congratulations to you and to us all.
Okay, now, thank you. Thank all of our guests. <laughs> These are very busy people, and we thank them for taking time out of the business schedule to be with us. And now we will have a selection by Mr. Jalen Crawford. <laughs> he is a senior and is accompanied by Mr. Robert Everett. see trees of green, red roses too, I've seen them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright, blessed day, part sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, or also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? But they're really saying, I love I hear babies cry, and I've watched them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, no. Thank you, Jalen. That was wonderful. <laughs> Coppin is proud of his outstanding faculty, our staff and students, and today representing those groups are Dr. Claudia Nelson, Dr. Sanithia Green, Ms. Sherry Larkins, Mr. Shaquille Carbon, and Mrs. Elise Collier, in that order. Madam President, Dr. Maria Thompson, seventh president of Coppin State University. I, Claudia Nelson, on behalf of the 134 dynamic, awesome, wonderful, committed, outstanding worker bees called faculty. I bring you greetings from your troops. On behalf of the faculty, we know that we have come this far by faith. 116 years of faith, enduring in the face of opposition, in the face of those who could not and did not believe that we could and that we would, and we did. On behalf of the faculty who stay committed to Coppin State University, we pledge our commitment to you also as your faculty. We are here 
to support, to encourage, even to fight a little, sorry, just a little, but we're here to do it on behalf of our students. We're here because Coppin has withstood the test of time. 105 remain HBCUs in this country, and we still hold it strong here in West Baltimore. We have a purpose. We have a mission that we're committed to. There is a vision that we want to see ever brighter, grow ever deeper. We have a commitment and we will fight to the end so that Coppin State University will be all that it can be. And we just ask that you work with us because we're here to work with you. We cherish you. I am a feminist, so I must say, we are happy, okay, <laughs> that you are here, the first woman president, but you are the one for this day, this time, this moment. We welcome you on behalf of 134 full-time faculty. I know somebody's saying, what about our adjunct? We have somebody coming to speak on behalf of our adjunct. I'm here to speak on behalf of the full-time faculty. Welcome to Coppin State University, and with a deep abiding love and faith in your leadership, we are here to serve. Welcome and congratulations. Good afternoon, Board of Regents, elected officials, presidents, and the Coppin State University community. It is indeed an honor for me to be here today to greet you on behalf of the adjunct faculty of Coppin State University. Dr. Thompson, on this occasion of your investiture as the seventh president of Coppin State University, we pledge to be partners with you as you navigate the waters to reposition our university among the competitors in the Maryland higher education community. It has taken over 115 years for us to get our first female president. How ironic it is that a woman would be at the helm of leadership in our country our city, and our university, as you officially are installed as the first female president at Coppin State University today. Like other institutions today, Coppin is challenged with a plethora of social, political, economic, and environmental forces that could have major implications on its sustainability as we move forward in the future. These forces are propelling us to remain united in our fight as we continue to move Coppin State University forward. Again, Dr. Thompson, we proudly lift you up today as you guide this great university in preparing leaders for the 21st century. Good afternoon, President Thompson, the Coppin family, and invited guests. My name is Sherry Larkins, Coppin State University's Staff Senate Chair. I'm here to bring greetings on this momentous occasion on behalf of Coppin State University Staff Senate. The Staff Senate offers our congratulations to Dr. Maria Thompson on this day, the investiture of Coppin State University's seventh president. We're proud to have you as part of the Coppin family, and we are excited to work with you as we move Coppin forward. 
We give our support, our involvement, our energy, and our commitment as we stand with you. We're confident that with your leadership and our collective vision, Coppin will continue to aim high and reach new heights. Dr. Thompson, thank you for supporting the Staff Senate, and again, congratulations. Dearly beloved, we are all gathered here today to get through this thing called Coppin State University. I just want to say that it's a very bittersweet moment for me today because today is the day we install a new president, but it is also the day that the student senate has voted on a new SGA president. So this is the last time that I get to speak directly to Dr. Thompson in this position so I'll try to make it count. <laughs> it goes without mentioning the fire I feel burning beautifully and bright within has me standing on my ears with joy. Just to congratulate our very own future trailblazer. Now, we all grew up as kids, and I'm talking to the millennials in the room, so if you're 40 and over, I'm not talking to you right now, but <laughs> I do still want you to listen. <laughs> But we grew up as kids reading stories and watching cartoons with these knights with bright shining armors coming to Calvary and coming to save the day. These men, these men with trapezius bodies who were fearless. But oh, who would have ever thought that a knight in a sh with a shining armor would have came up on 2500 West North Avenue, took off his helmet, and 18 inches of hair would have fell out. Dr. Thompson, on behalf of the students of the courageous Coppin State University, home of the majestic Eagle, the HBCU that is the best HBCU known to man and God, we send a most gracious congratulations on being the seventh president of this illustrious university. They said that God made the earth in seven days. There are seven classical planets, seven colors in God's covenant, the rainbow, seven continents, and then there's that store at Mondama that helps us get through these late nights at Coppin 7-Eleven. <laughs> but then there is you, the seventh president our seventh wonder, our seventh hope at a change, our seventh hope at a bigger, brighter, better future, our seventh dream that we will one day be the best university, not just the best HBCU, but the best university in this state and in this country. And I stand on my ears and I speak on behalf of all undergraduate students. We are glad you're here. We want you to stay and we give you a big congratulations. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> what can I say? Good afternoon. My name is Elise Collier, and I am the national president of Coppin State University National Alumni Association. It is indeed an honor and privilege to participate in this historical occasion. The investiture of Dr. Thomas, as everyone stated already, the first female president of Coppin State University. Each member of the Coppin State University National Alumni Association congratulates and extend a heartfelt welcome to Dr. Maria Thompson, seventh president of our beloved alma mater. In addition, 
The members of the Coppin State University National Alumni Association pledge our continued support of the university and look forward to wholeheartedly working with Dr. Thompson to fulfill her vision for the University of Coppin State University. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your greetings and your commitment to Coppin State University. And thanks again to all who brought greetings today. Please welcome Christian Harris, a Coppin alumna, who will sing Believe in Yourself.
Thank you so much, Christian. Dr. Deborah L. Thompson is a professor of co in the College of New Jersey, a professor in the School of Education. Her area of concentration is literacy and children's literature. However, today she's here to share with us in a different role. In this momentous occasion, she's here to share with her, us about her sister, Dr. Maria Thompson. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Deborah L. Thompson. Good afternoon. With threats from my brother who says he's going to make his grandchild scream if I get too long, I promise I will be short. I would like to start with a paraphrase of one of my favorite poems by Maya Angelou. I've slightly adjusted it to call it, And Still We Rise. Just like moon and the sun, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still we rise. Today we celebrate not only the investiture of a new president, who happens to be one of my younger sisters, but also to celebrate the resilience of HBCUs and their continued and vital role in shaping our nation. Since 1837, when Cheney University of Pennsylvania opened its doors as the first institute of higher learning for blacks, couldn't call them African Americans, 1837, we still weren't citizens. HBCUs have provided the means for tens of thousands of students to rise to their full potential. Those of us who attended HBCUs, and young men, we'll have to talk about this later, about the best one, <laughs> <laughs> know the strength of their academic, psychological, emotional, and social support provided. No student could go unhelped because all professors stepped out to give a helping hand. I am sure many of us cherish, as I do, my first memories of being a freshman at Tennessee State University. It was a step show. Cap and I apologize if I forget somebody. Kappas, Qs, Sigmas, Alphas, Deltas, AKAs, Sigmas, and Zetas. Precision moves, precise steps in a sea of reds and whites, purples and golds, pinks and greens, blues and whites, and black. These institutions still provide such memories, but they also serve another purpose, providing a first wave, world-class education. Makes you wonder what the late Antonin Scalia was doing when they talked about HBCUs at his school. It also makes you wonder while other uninformed opinions he delivered from the bench. However, academics at ACBCUs are second to none. I would put my TSU bachelor's degree up to anybody's, as with all of my siblings. Here are a few amazing facts I discovered in my research. Although HBCUs constitute only 3% of the, all the institutions in the United States, 
they produce 24% of all STEM graduates, 35% of graduates in astronomy, biology, chemistry, math, and physics. Eight of 10 institutions producing black undergraduates who went on to earn science and engineering doctorates were HBCUs. However, we know HBCUs are struggling, even this one. But this is where a strong and brilliant leader steps in. You can read my sister's bona fides on the back of the book. I'm going to tell you about her DNA. <laughs> in her DNA are generations of strong-willed and fearless women, such as our maternal grandmother, our mother there, Mrs. Mary L. Thompson, <laughs> who took on the entire editorial board, now granted it was just three people, <laughs> of her small hometown newspaper, this was in the 60s, when something she had submitted to the paper about her trip to the Montreal World's Fair was printed under the banner of interest to colored people. Rest assured, after our grandmother visited the offices of this newspaper, that column no longer appeared. This fearlessness and strong will standing and standing one's ground also extends to the men in our family. Our late father, Paul W. Thompson, is probably smiling from ear to ear. And this is about his father, our paternal grandfather. Our father was small, he and his one of his brothers. They were out celebrating Joe Lewis's defeat of Jim Braddock. This was 1937. They lived in Nashville. The local policeman walked down the sidewalk and informed in <clears throat> 1937's parlance to two little black kids that they had better get off the front porch and onto the yard and be in the house when he walked back down the street. He was on his rounds. Okay, so when the policeman returned on his rounds, no, my, our father and our uncle, no, they were not there. But our grandfather was sitting on those same steps with a shotgun. <laughs> he informed the policeman um, with a few choice words that I won't repeat. He told the policeman, I own these steps. I own this yard, and my boys can sit on the steps and play in this yard when I say they can. Rest assured, the policeman went on about his business. <laughs> Our parents, again, Mrs. Mary L. Thompson and the late Paul W. Thompson, told us many good things, you know, when you're little, you kind of say, oh, any more good information? But anyway, one of their favorites was, any job worth doing is worth doing well. So with the blood of these proud parents, proud ancestors, cousins and uncles and aunts galore up front, I know that my sister, Dr. Maria Thompson, will bring to the job a single-mindedness of purpose to ensure that Coppin State is set on a sound footing and continues to provide quality education for all. She will bring her many gifts and her high intellect to the job 
and I can guarantee you as her older sister, oldest sister, she will provide and give this university her all so that it rises, it rises, and it still rises. Thank you. Dr. Thompson, we have a very special presentation for you at this time from Mr. Dwayne Moody, a principal tenor in the off-Broadway show, Three Mo Tennis. He's here today to perform in your honor. Good afternoon, everybody. It's been a while since I've been here. It's a good thing to be back. I appreciate it. Um, the song that I want to sing for you all this afternoon is entitled, Make Them Hear You. Um, I'm used to singing that with the group, with the other, th other two guys. So, you know, forgive me if I get a little, you know, carried away. But uh, um, I bring you greetings from Washington, DC, um, as well as Three Mo Tenors, but also from the Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts, where I'm an associate professor of voice there. Um, so again, anybody that's graduating or interested in a future continuing of the career in music, come on up to Berkeley, we'd love to have you as well. All right? Make them hear you. Go out and tell the story let it echo far and wide make them hear you make them hear you how justice was our battle and how justice was denied make them hear you make them hear you and say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight that sometimes there are battles that are more than black or white and i could not put down my sword when justice was my right make them hear you make them hear you Go out and tell the story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only ones. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Your sword can be a sermon or the power of the pen. Teach every child to raise his voice and then my brothers then. Well, justice be demanded by ten million righteous men. Make them hear you. When they hear you, I'll be near you. Hug yeah. God bless you. Thank you.
That was really awesome. Give him another hand. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moody. And now, it's time for that great moment, the investiture of the seventh president of Coppin State University. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Robert L. Corrett, Chancellor of the University System of Maryland. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here sharing this uh, wonderful afternoon with all of you and with Maria Thompson. Uh, it's always an exciting time for a campus and investiture. I'd like to take a moment uh, to introduce a couple of people also. We have Muriel Howard with us, the president of the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. We appreciate you being here, Muriel. And I also want to thank uh, the system presidents. We are one happy family, brothers and sisters working together. We have virtually all of the presidents here with us today. Thanks for being with us today. You know, Maria and I actually started on the same day. July 1, almost a year ago, so we have that special bond. Uh, she's also the first president I had part in hiring uh, as, as the chancellor of the system, so we'll always have uh, that special bond. And though it uh, often gets me into trouble, I like to say on days like today that, you know, Towson, I'm oh, sorry, Towson, 29 years at Towson University. Today, Coppin State University is my favorite campus in the University System of Maryland. <laughs> sorry, Kim. <laughs> And Maria Thompson is my favorite president. <laughs> I said that a couple of times this year, and the press would pick it up and leave off the today piece. And they would just say, the chancellor said Campus X was his favorite campus, and it always gets me into trouble, but I, it's always a, a fun line. Maria, uh, already in your short tenure as president of this wonderful institution, you've proven yourself to be a driven, dynamic, and tireless leader with the right vision for this institution. With your ideal mix of education and executive experience, you have ex impressed the entire Coppin community, faculty, staff, students, and alumni with your strong commitment to preparing graduates who are analytical, socially responsible, lifelong learners, graduates who will be positive forces in their communities. And this leadership came, can't, couldn't come at a better time. We are all working, all of us in higher education, to increase student retention and graduation rates and strengthen academic programs with our faculty. We are also working in partnership to continue Compton's role, both vital as a part of higher education in general in this city, this nation, and the state of Maryland, and as well as global, but also as one of this nation's historic black universities a, a, a role that it has embraced, as we've heard today, for over 115 years. These two roles, higher education in general, and an HBCU in particular, are part of Coppin's past, an important part of its present, and an equally important part of its future. As in all journeys, there will be trials as well as triumphs. I pledge the full support of my office and the University System of Maryland every step of the way, through all the perks, all the peaks, all the valleys, and all of, the, all of the things that make us laugh and all of the things that make us cry. Of course, beyond its vital academic programs, Coppin is an integral part of the social, cultural, and intellectual life here in Baltimore. And again, I commend our new president for her unwavering commitment to continue to make Coppin a thriving member of the community in which it resides. It has played that role for a long, long time and it's an important part of what needs to be part of happening here in West Baltimore going forward. And so, as your efforts on behalf of Coppin State University continue, I hereby charge you, Dr. Maria Thompson, to hold this institution in the highest regard, to strengthen its academic programs, especially in areas of great need in the state of Maryland and the nation, and to advance for the students who have, pla who have placed their faith in you, all that you can do to make them successful and to find their paths to the future. I charge you to value the contributions of the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and every member of the Coppin community, recognizing that the university's future is dependent upon strong and productive relationships among the entire Coppin family. I charge you to ever be mindful of the unique place Coppin holds as, his, as a historically black university and to honor the traditions and special responsibilities that accompany that designation 
while at the same time continuing to expand the horizons and broadening the visions for this institution and its future. I charge you to be a force for unity, bringing together the wonderful diversity of this campus and a common mission to its student success, learning, and leadership. I charge you to reach deep into the community around you, responding to the needs and concerns of the community, making your institution a vital and vibrant member of the community. And lastly, I charge you to meet and master the very challenges you have articulated yourself, making Coppin an exemplar of public urban higher education while serving as a leading steward of this West Baltimore community. None of these charges will be easy. There will be times of great success and times of setbacks. And through it all, we know you will pers persevere. And through it all, the University System of Maryland and I personally will work with you as a partner every day. For all of us here today, academicians, students, friends, and supporters of public, private education from across the city, throughout the state and the nation, I offer you congratulations and best wishes. We know you'll be successful. We need you to be successful. Maria, we're here to help you. Congratulations. <laughs> Many of you have heard this story. Uh, there were a number of very strong finalists for the job for this position. And the, the thing that set Maria apart, which was reflected in what her sister just said, was that one of the board members said to her, why should we pick you? And she said, because I'm fearless. And we all said, that's who we need. <laughs> We now come to the focal point of today's ceremonies, the investiture, and I will ask Regent Barry Gossett, Vice Chair of the University System of Maryland, to join me here at the podium. Maria? Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> it's my pleasure and privilege and distinct honor to confer <clears throat> upon, uh, to confer Coppin State uh, University's highest honor upon Dr. Maria Thompson. Today, she will receive the symbol of her new office, the President's Medallion. The medallion's weight is a reminder of the heavy responsibilities that must be willingly carried out by those who occupy the position of leadership. And design, the design on his face, a reproduction of the university seal, is a representation of the large community that it serves. Maria Thompson, <clears throat> you have been duly selected to serve as president of Coppin State University. As vice chair of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents, it is my pleasure to install you in that office with all the requisite rights, privileges, and responsibilities. The seventh president of Coppin State University, Dr. Maria Thompson. At this time, I present to you Dr. Maria Thompson. Thank you, everybody. Please be seated. I appreciate it. I just need one moment to collect myself and some water. The people who work with me every day and who've seen me speak know that I have two bad habits during my speeches. One is crying, which I've already started. 
and the other is never sticking to the written script. <laughs> because the crying, if there is something meaningful, you should never be ashamed to show your emotions. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for being here today to celebrate our university and its 115 year history. Because that's what we're really here to do, to celebrate Coppin State University. There is no need for a leader unless there is an organization or an institution to lead. So I stand here before you a symbol of the enduring values, the tireless effort of generations of women and men who have contributed to the success of this institution since its founding in 1900. I accept the charge to lead this magnificent institution. And I'd like to thank Regent Chairman Jim Shea, Vice Chairman Barry Gossett, and all the Regents, Chancellor Robert Corrett, and former Chancellor Britt Kerwin for entrusting me with the future of this university. I'm very humbled. I have a long, long, long list of people to thank, and this is where it's like the Academy Awards, and I don't intend to leave anybody out, but I will sure make my best effort to include everyone. I want to recognize you for your support and your presence, presence here today. Community leaders, public officials, clergy persons, business leaders, university presidents and delegates, past CSU presidents, leaders of higher education associations and professional organizations and the National Science Foundation, campus shared governance leaders, alumni association leaders, foundation board leaders, friends from New York, friends from Tennessee, colleagues from New York, and colleagues from Tennessee. Coppin State students, faculty, staff, and alumni, a special thanks to you for your hard work and your dedication, your support, and for making me feel welcome in the Coppin family. The Investiture Planning Committee, thanks for making today a memorable day for my family and a relatively stress-free day for me. <laughs> CSU facilities team, our campus is always beautiful, but you have outdone yourselves today in beautifying the campus for today's ceremony. Dr. Nancy Klanuski, president of SUNY Oneonta, and my former boss. Thank you for your mentorship, encouragement, and your friendship. You never doubted for one minute that I would be a college president. Dr. Melvin Johnson, retired president of Tennessee State University, 
and Dr. Marcy Johnson, his wife. Thanks for challenging me with lots of assignments and encouraging me to leave TSU to develop new skills and a broader perspective. I loved working at TSU and I see some of my colleagues there. I absolutely loved it. I could have worked that job for free. I loved it that much. But Dr. Johnson said, you need to leave the nest. You need different experiences. You need different perspectives. And he was right to push me out of the nest to help me grow professionally. Dr. Joseph Perry, my significant other, people don't, didn't think you existed. <laughs> and you probably think sometimes, I think you don't exist. <laughs> uh, thanks for your patience with my unpredictable and all-consuming work schedule. You are a very understanding and patient person. Dr. Geraldine Johnson, one of my undergraduate professors at TSU, thanks for encouraging me to hold my first leadership roles in student organizations. It helped to build my confidence and laid the foundation for leadership roles in my career. Dr. Hazel Jackson, my undergraduate advisor. Now this is how important undergraduate advising is, everyone. This woman pushed me to the limit. She had impossibly high expectations for me. I can say that if I had not met Dr. Hazel Jackson, I would not have excelled in research, for she started me on a research project as a first semester freshman who was clueless about what I was doing, but she didn't care. She said, this is the experience you need. She is watched, she couldn't be here today. She's in San Francisco watching the streaming video. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, you were the best professor. Ever. And now, my family, nearly 40 members of my family are here today. They've traveled to be with me to Baltimore. Please stand. whole investiture getting to see all my family on both sides. Thank you to my sisters, Debbie or Deborah, whom you just met, my sister Lillian, my sister Rita, my brother Zach, my nieces, Avery Adele, and Adele, my nephews, Xavier, Zane, John Paul, Scotty, Charlie, and Gabriel, who was 10 months old. <laughs> I have numerous cousins here on both sides of my family. I haven't seen some of you in so long. I'm so happy that you're here today. I love you. Thank you for being here. My father, as you heard uh, from my sister, Paul W. Thompson, passed away 20 years ago. He was a science educator who loved physics and earth science. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. My only regret is that you're not here today to witness this moment in my life. 
of my dad's younger brother, Raymond Thompson, the patriarch of the Thompson family, is here from Providence, Rhode Island. wife, Evelyn, and with his grandchild, who's named after my father, the 11-year-old Paul Thompson. You have to be a scientist, young man. <laughs> I will send you a physics kit for Christmas. <laughs> Special thanks to my mother, Mary L. Thompson language educator in two languages, English and Spanish. Mama, you are the strongest and smartest, most determined person I know. If you think I'm fearless, <laughs> y'all would be scared of her. <laughs> I love you, Mama. I only met one of my grandparents, three of them passed away before I was born. But the one I remember is my mother's mother, Mary Scott. And there are two things I remember about her, my cousins, the cooking. We remember the fabulous cooking. And also she had a deep love of learning. I believe she, uh, she could have passed the bar. That's how much law she read and knew. And uh, we could never wiggle out of anything when we got in trouble with her. She was a, a deep lover of, of learning. And also, grandparents I did not meet, but surely set the stage for me being here today. My mother's father, Eddie Scott. My dad's father, Vernon Thompson and Lillian Alberta Thompson, my dad's mother, who was the first educator in the Thompson family. I have to say a few more words about my parents, Paul and Mary Thompson, because really this is their moment more than mine. It's not every day that you see two African-American women who are sisters with PhDs giving the presidential and the keynote address. And that's the person who made it happen, my mother and my father. You have four bars on a robe or a gown when you, have, when you become a president. You have three when you have a PhD. Mama, you and Daddy have all seven of these bars that Debbie and I have collectively. Her three and my four. This regalia really belongs to you. On July 1st, 2015, I was honored to become the seventh president of Coppin State University. I began my appointment as our community was still reeling from the devastating unrest that exploded just steps from our campus. The interviews for this position were being held at the time when the unrest was taking place. Some people, not everybody, but some people who knew I was interviewing in Baltimore and knew the location of the campus near the unrest asked me, why would you want to work there? My, my response was twofold. First of all, anywhere you have people, you have problems. 
So you can never predict what might happen at any time in any place. My next response was, if you are a career educator and you truly believe in the transformative power of education, you should be willing to take up the cause to work in any community in this country. Coppin State University is an essential part of Baltimore's history and an essential part of Baltimore's future. There was a time when nearly every school teacher or nurse who you encountered in the Baltimore area was a product of Coppin State University. Our graduates are legendary in the Baltimore community. So what does the future hold for the campus in its second century? What will we accomplish in the next 115 years? The answers to those questions depend entirely on the kinds of seeds that we sow in the next few years. Harry Truman, 33rd President of the United States said, actions are seeds of fate. Deeds grow into destiny. I am extremely optimistic about the future of Coppin State University and our new direction includes sowing seeds that make the following aspirations a reality. One, to be a multi-generational learning environment nationally recognized for community engagement. That sounds like a whole lot of education ease, so I'm going to uh, break that down a little bit. The average age of students here is 28. Only 10% of students come straight out of high school and onto Coppin State University's campus. We have all on the campus at the same time and sometimes in the same, many times in the same families, a child, a parent, and a grandchild, all studying to better themselves and to earn an education. This is truly a multi-generational learning environment. Now, the community engaged part of that, being nationally recognized for community engagement, there is so much community engagement taking place on this campus in the classroom, outside the classroom, students, faculty, and staff, academic units, and even in the administrative units. However, we have never applied for the Carnegie Foundation status of community engaged campus, but guess what? We're about to. So by the year 2020, I intend for us to be recognized by the Carnegie Foundation as one of the 371 campuses out of 400, 726 campuses that are recognized by the Carnegie Foundation for Community Engagement. The next aspiration is to build a robust, mission-appropriate research enterprise that enhances student learning, produces new knowledge, innovative solutions, and creative and artistic assets. We will accomplish this by engaging as many undergraduates as possible in research. I'm a firm believer of it. I'm a product of undergraduate research, as I told you from minute one that I set foot on campus at Tennessee State University. We will fold research 
into the teaching and learning that, that takes place on this campus and do so with intention. The third aspiration is to become a campus community that moves beyond continuous improvement to continuous excellence. I won't be satisfied if all we do is take our data just to incrementally improve our current day-to-day -day operations. It is necessary but not sufficient. What we need to do is to innovate, to redefine, to re-engineer, to reimagine what education in the public sector in an urban community is all about. I will not be happy if all we're going to do is imitate some other institution. We need to be the institution that people imitate. You're clapping now, but don't be mad at me next week when I'm pushing on you. So how can we achieve these aspirations? What must we do? We must have the highest possible expectations of our students, our faculty, our alumni, and our external partners. The things that seem a little out of our reach, that push us past our comfort zone, the things we don't feel like we want to do, those are exactly the things we need to do. Now, I'm one person, and I cannot be in all places at all times. Can't be everywhere, can't do everything. And believe me, I've already been trying. I need everyone pushing past their comfort zone. I need everyone holding the highest expectations for our students and for our colleagues. And I'm not saying that this is going to be easy or that this is going to be instant, but I know we can do it. If we set our minds to it, this is something we must do. We must change higher education, especially in Baltimore. This is what I'm going off script, but it's okay. Do you know that two-thirds of Baltimore City high school graduates will enter higher ed but will not get a credential within six years. And we know, as higher ed, uh, those of us in education know, time is the enemy to degree completion. The longer you are, y'all gonna have to stop me, the longer <laughs> You are in the university, the less likely it is you are to graduate. Who says it needs to take four years? Got quiet. <laughs> and I say this in a city where there are 12 accredited colleges and universities and two-thirds of our Baltimore City college, I mean high school graduates, do not get a credential within six years or less. And five of these institutions are public. And I'm looking at some of the presidents, we gotta work on this. I'm going to stop and go back to my speech. 
And I hope y'all don't hate me on Monday at Bob's meeting. <laughs> so during those times, Coppin State University, when we think we cannot do anymore because of the thing that, because things are too difficult or you're too tired, I want you to stop. This is what I do. Take a break and read the writings of our namesake, Fanny Jackson Coppin. She left her writings behind to inspire us. We chose her as our namesake. We should be using her, reading her religiously. When I cannot read another email, this is what I pick up. I'm going to briefly tell you the story of Fanny Jackson Coppin. She was a pioneer in American education, but her story is largely unknown. Fanny Jackson Coppin was born a slave in 1837 in Washington, D.C. An aunt purchased her freedom when she was 12 and she moved to Massachusetts. She was very determined not only to get an education but to ed educate others. And she says about that, it was in me to get an education and to teach my people. This idea was deep in my soul. Where it came from, I cannot tell you, for I had never had any exhortations nor lectures which influenced me to take this course. It must have been born in me.